Now, let's start our card tutorial. For the card portion making of this video, we're going to be playing with more alcohol inks. We're going to be looking at using alcohol ink lift today. But first, let's make our background. For the background, I'm going to be using Glacier, Cobalt, Boysenberry, and Wild Plum. To start with, I'm going to be sprinkling some rubbing alcohol onto our Yupo paper. For rubbing alcohol, I am using 99%. So I'm just going to drizzle a good portion of that on our paper, and I'm going to start sprinkling some alcohol inks. For this, I'm being pretty random, no particular plan at the moment. I want to get some good ink flow and coverage, and then we'll take things from there. I love how alcohol is so free form. It is very relaxing, and I love watching the colors mix and mingle on the page. Now that I've got all of my inks down, it's time to get the ink moving. And to do that, I have my Tim Holtz ink blower tool. And I'm just going to gently puff little bits of air across the paper to get some movement. Okay, and I've got a little bit of white down here. Normally I'd like a bit of white space, but because I'm going to be lifting, I need to get the alcohol ink to move all over the page. So I'm going to take the ink blowing tool and continue to push the ink to the edge of the Yupo paper. I'm pretty happy with this background, so I'm going to give it a moment to dry, and then we're going to lift some ink. Before we start lifting, I'm going to trim down our background so it will fit an average card front. Taking my Tim Holtz tonic trimmer, I'm going to cut this down to four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, let's lift. So for lifting, I'm going to be pulling out my Tim Holtz stamping platform. So we'll stick this stone onto some sticky back grid, add the magnets, and get out our stamps. For lifting today, I'm going to be using the stamp set floral outlines. Now let's apply some lift ink to our stamps. So just moving this over to the side, I'm going to grab our lift ink and tap it onto the stamps. Okay, and now let's lift. So I'm going to press this down and I'm going to apply good firm pressure, but I'm going to wait a little bit while I'm pressing down on the stamps. This will give the alcohol ink lift ink time to do its work. Now, while I'm holding that in place, I'm going to grab some specialty stamping paper. With the specialty stamping paper, I am going to be transferring the lifted ink onto here. We're going to get two cards out of one stamping. Okay. 
that looks really good. Let's take a close up look at the stamps. As you can see, we have got alcohol ink on the stamps. We are next going to transfer this ink onto some specialty stamping paper. Now I'm going to switch this out for our specialty stamping paper. Now because I have the grid on here, I can easily see where I need to place this next piece. I'm going to set that down, pull this one out, set that aside for the moment. Okay, and we're going to stamp with the ink that was lifted onto the stamps. And again, placing this down, applying good firm pressure. Okay, let's see how that went. That looks really good. Let's pull this off and take a closer look. Here are the, our results of the lifted ink on the stamps. And this is the transfer from our piece of UPO paper. This is what we pulled the ink off of, and this is what we transferred the ink onto. And we get all of the wonderful subtle variants that were in the alcohol ink transferred onto the specialty stamping paper. Let's set this aside and see how the other portion for our other card has gone. For this, we're going to need some paper towel. The less textured your paper towel is, the better. This is what I have and hopefully I'm not gonna get too much texture transfer. So I'm going to push that down and blot off the remaining lifting. As we can see, when we pull this away, we have the color coming onto the paper towel. Now I'm going to take a smaller section of the towel and I'm going to gently dab at the design and carefully lift the ink until I'm not getting any more color residue on the paper towel. As you can see, I'm still getting a bit of ink residue, so I'll continue to blot until the paper towel comes away clean. Okay, that looks much better. I'm going to get a clean corner of this and see if we're still getting some ink residue. Not a whole lot. So on this flower, we're now going to gently rub and that will take the last little bit of residue off. As you can see, when I rub, the image comes into sharper focus. And look at that. This is a part that we haven't dabbed away from yet. We've still got a great ghosty image, but over here we've got crisp, clear lines. Okay, let's put this on fast forward while I blot up the rest of the residue on the rest of this card. Okay, now that I've dabbed off as much of the residue as I can, it's time to gently rub away the last little bits and watch our image come into focus. This is definitely my favorite part of this technique. It's always amazing to watch the image slowly come into focus. Okay, well, let's move over to this section of the card. I found when working with alcohol ink lift, the darker the ink that you put down, the more visible the changes when you lift the ink. 
Lighter ink can work, but it's a lot more subtle. And I like to have a bold contrast on my backgrounds. And there we go. This is our alcohol ink lifted background. Now let's set this aside and make some sentiments for our two cards. For our sentiments, I'm going to be using the Bold Sayings Tim Holtz stamp set. And we're going to be using some silver embossing powder by Ranger. I've cut down two pieces of paper for our sentiments. The vellum one is four and a half by three inches, and the black cardstock one is three inches by three and three quarters. So before I emboss, I'm going to give the paper a quick swipe with my anti-static pouch tool. I tend to have greasy fingerprints and those always show up unless I use the anti-static pouch. So give that a quick swipe. We're going to be using the thank you so much and the happy birthday wishes to you stamps. First, I'm going to stamp the thank you so much. And I've got my distress embossing ink right here. And I'll just tilt my stamp make sure that I've got the embossing ink everywhere. You tilt it, you can see in the light where it's shiny. And I always do a quick check to make sure I didn't miss any areas. All right, that looks good. Let's stamp. And I'll just line this up using my acrylic block. Stamp with good pressure. And now, time to add the embossing powder. I'm going to quickly put down a piece of scrap paper to catch my embossing powder. Give it a quick tap. And I still have a couple of stray grains of embossing powder, but not a big deal. I'll just grab a brush and quickly wipe that off. Okay, I'm gonna set this one aside and we'll put embossing powder on our other sentiment. So for this one, we're going to be stamping happy birthday wishes to you. And again, quickly wipe this off and add some Distress Embossing Ink. And again, I'll do a quick check to make sure I've got good ink coverage. I can see that the stamp is nice and shiny. So we are good to stamp. Perfect. Now let's add the embossing powder. And I'll give that a quick little tap. Oh, I do have a little smear of powder up there, but I can easily get rid of that. Good. Now it is time to emboss. For this, I will put us on fast forward and enjoy watching the ever beautiful melting of embossing powder.
And there we go, our two sentiments embossed and ready to be used on our cards. I love using the silver embossing powder. It looks so dramatic against black and so elegant over vellum. So let's bring back in our two card fronts. I'm going to place the vellum on this one and we're going to place the black and silver on that one. We've got one more element to add to this card. I couldn't resist but also bring in another one of the new Chapter 3 Tim Holtz Sizzix dies. I just had to play with this one. Leafy Twigs. This has so much detail and I wanted to add a little extra texture to this card. So let me set this aside for a moment and we're going to add a die cut. Here is our die cut. This die cut I cut from some of the Tim Holtz metallic cardstock and I added some double-sided tape so this will be easy to put onto our card. But I'm not gonna just put all of it onto the card. We're gonna take a couple of bits and pieces. Okay, so we're just going to make a couple of quick little snips and we will add this on to the card. The nice things about die cuts, you don't have to use all of it at once. You can just use parts and pieces for whatever your project needs. Okay, now I'll just peel off the sticky backing on this and we will add it to our card. I always love using double-sided tape on extra intricate dies because it saves me from glue ooze when I try to adhese it to a page. Okay, so I'm going to start down in this corner and gently adhese. Okay, there we go. And let's add our sentiment. So to add the sentiment, I'm just going to give a quick couple of stripes with the ATG gun. Okay, and there's one card front finished. 
Let's take a look at our last one. So for this one, we're just going to add the vellum over the top. And to do that, I'm going to switch adhesives. Depending on what you're adhesing and to where, you might have to change. I have got glue tape, but this one in specific is for vellum. Okay, and let's place that on our card front. And there we go, two cards from one technique. Today's technique, alcohol lifting. Thank you so much for joining me at the Crafty Corner today, and until next time, happy crafting!